Hi guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life and welcome to another edition of Tool Time Tuesday. This week, I'm gonna take you along and kinda of show you some of the two by 72 grinding belts that I've been experimenting with. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for the wind outside. It is really windy here and I wanna get this filmed so I'm just doing it in spite of the noise. When I first started grinding and getting into making knives, I, like a lot of people, started out with the aluminum oxide belts. These are great, uh, they're easy to come by, and they, they do work well. A lot of different grits available for them, and they're inexpensive, but once you kind of start looking around with different suppliers and different options out there, you kind of wonder about, you know, what about this, what about that? So what I've done lately is I've been buying different belts and just to try them out, I'll buy three or four of a certain type and a few more of a different type, along with my regular order of belts that I know and that I really enjoy using. So I think I'm gonna keep doing that, just keep adding different types of belts just to see what I think about them. A few of them I found that I'm absolutely blown away by and they really speed up the process. Also, they can really affect the overall quality of your knife build as well. So it's definitely worth looking into some different options. I just figured I'd show you a few of the ones that I've found lately and that I'm quite happy with. And I'll also show you ones that I've tried that I'm just kind of nah, not too crazy about. So let's get started. All right, so of course your first belt option is the aluminum oxide. Um, like I say, very easy to come by, uh, not hard to find. Oh, I forget who makes these. Made in Germany. Shoot, I don't even have the brand name on here. But anyways, when I first got into knife making, I bought myself a few of these, uh, 80 grit, 220 grit, and 400 grit. I use my 80 grit, obviously, for the rough shaping and the roughing out and for my main uh, heavy uh, profiling and stuff. And then I'd use my 220, and I really never use the 400 that much. Sometimes I'd use it just to clean up the spine and get a really nice finish, but these do work good. What I found though is that with these, I will get about two knives, depending on the size and stuff. But in about two knives, I'm pretty much done with a belt. Uh, just to exact, let you know, these belts from my supplier are $4. So it's about $2 in, in abrasives just to rough profile and rough shape your knife uh, with aluminum oxide. But again, I just want to make it clear that aluminum oxide is a great place to start. If you're kind of getting into it, maybe if you've just made yourself a grinder and you're not sure, or you're not making a lot of knives, um, these are really easy to come by. You're going to want to watch the storage of these. Uh, these tend to curl up and twist quite badly. Any any belt that's a little softer is going to do that on you, just like this. And uh, if you're not careful, sometimes you leave them laying around, you set some on them, you can kind of kink the blade and then it's going to bump every time it comes around. So what I've actually done is I've made a storage rack for all my belts and I'll show that in one second. This is the belt storage uh, rack that I made. Very inexpensive, cobbled it together. Um, especially with some of these thinner belts, these aluminum oxides, some of the thin structured abrasives. Now, these are ceramics, but it's nice to store them like this because then they don't get all coiled up on you. So real quick look at something I did. Uh, the bottom is for like my kids archery stuff, but super simple. Store a lot of belts in there, keeps all your brand new belts out of the way and nice and good shape and they're not getting all cattywampus on you, so yeah. The next belt that I tried fiddling with and I'm really happy with is a ceramic belt. Uh, this is a Norton uh, Norax Engineered Abrasives and these things really cut material very quickly and I find that the material actually stays a little cooler using a ceramic belt than it does with a um, aluminum oxide. Um, and with the other belts, I'll get maybe two blades out of one, and they're $4. Well, these belts cost me $10, but I can get six to eight blades out of one before I feel that it's just too slow. Um, obviously, you can keep these belts going and going and going, but all you're gonna do is slow your process down. You get slightly inconsistent results as a belt gets worn in different spots, but like I said, this belt will usually give me six to eight knives, and it's $10, whereas the other ones only give me two knives at the most, and they're $4, so from a money perspective, this is actually a more uh, fiscally efficient way to go. And obviously these do come in a varying degree of different grits. Uh, this is quite a fine belt. I believe this is equivalent to about a 400. This I'm pretty sure is equal to about a 80. Um, you'll have to check, depending on the different brand, they've got different designations. It's not your standard, uh, you know, 120, 240, or 220 or 400 like it is with, with most, like aluminum oxides and that 
uh, those types of sandpapers. Uh, these ones will have different uh, ratings on them. So you'll have to look them up. And usually when you buy them, they'll say equivalent to this. I'm not exactly sure why they designate it this way. Uh, it might be due to the fact that when you buy like an aluminum oxide, that size, uh, the 220 grit or the 400 grit, is actually a very specific designation to the size of the actual brace of balls, the little particles. And I think because these actually don't use that same type of abrasive, um, like say this is ceramic, they can't really uh, size it in that way. So I think that's why they have different designations, but I don't know that for a fact. That's just kind of my uh, processing. So just, I need to be clear, I guess these are ceramic belts, not necessarily structured abrasives. Um, Norton, Norwax, same type of uh, field. Example, this one here is also a Norton Norax, but this is actually a structured abrasive or an engineered abrasive. A little bit different than a ceramic. Um, other options, I've tried a few of these and honestly I don't like these as much. I find for the same equivalent grit, um, these structured abrasive ones run hotter and my material gets hotter quicker than with the ceramic. One thing I really like about the ceramic is that when you're doing your really rough profiling and, and heavy shaping, uh, it keeps the blades relatively cool. I find that my blades stay the coolest working with ceramics than any other type of uh, belt that I've used. Having said that, also, uh, the coarser of a grit you use, the less heat you're going to produce. If you're using a really fine belt, your material is going to heat up really quick, obviously, because there's more contact area, more surface, um, more friction with your workpiece. So if you're using a really coarse, there's a lot less surface area, and it's not rubbing as much. It's just cutting uh, deeper chunks out, and it actually stays cooler. Now really, those are the three types of cutting belts that I've experimented with. I'm going to show you a few different variations on those as well. One other belt that I've started to use is a surface conditioning belt. Um, think of it, it's pretty much just Scotch-Brite. These are really nice for putting a nice finish on your, on your bevels before you put it to heat treat. Um, it's not going to do a lot of heavy carving, but it leaves a nice grain and nice, nice clean lines in there. And actually sometimes if you're going from a really coarse belt and you've got a lot of lines those scratch marks from your your profiling uh, this actually does a fairly good job of smoothing it out and leaving a slightly more consistent it's not going to give you a really high polished look but it does a good job at giving a nice fairly smooth surface finish i absolutely love these belts now these belts are quite expensive i believe these are about 25 dollars a piece having said that i've got one belt that i've used for probably 30 blades so far and I'm still using it, it will get pitted and kind of get a little bit of build up in there. Um, but I found it actually builds up quite evenly so I do get a consistent even pattern when I'm, when I'm grinding and kind of cleaning things up with these. So I would say I still probably have at least another 20 blades left in the belt that I'm using. This is a different one. This one's almost brand new. But uh, this one got ripped. I think something fell on it, so it's garbage, it's kind of a shame. But a lot of different, uh, I think there's usually three different, like a coarse, medium, and a fine. This is a fine. I'm not sure what grit it would relate to, but it does a pretty good job and it leaves a nice finish on your knives. One thing I'd recommend is you don't use this necessarily much for micartas or handle materials, something a little softer. Uh, I tried it on those and it does build up a lot quicker, so I pretty much use these exclusively just for steel. And the last type of belt that I have uh, been experimenting with is a felt belt. Um, you can get leather ones as well. Um, a lot of people use the leather ones for power stropping. Uh, this is felt, I don't use it for stropping at all. I use this one for polishing. I really like this for polishing even more than my buffing wheel. Uh, two reasons mainly, well I guess just one, but I like that I can follow the exact contour that I put on the bevel of a knife. So if I did a, a flat grind, I can just, you know, run it flat against the platen and polish exactly that surface just like I've done every other step to that surface. Rather than using a, a buffing wheel that's round and trying to polish a flat surface, I actually find this does a quicker job and it actually looks cleaner. Uh, also when I'm using this with a contact wheel for a hollow grind knife, really like the finish I get with these. I put a little bit of a green compound on there and again I'll go up to about 600 grit uh, at abrasive before I'll go to this, maybe even more, but even like 600 grit and then I'll go to this and I get a really nice finish and um, heats up the blade quite a bit so you do have to be careful. One other thing to keep in mind when you're trying out different belts is that they all run differently in your machine, not just the tracking but how they feel. Uh, for example, those Scotch-Brite ones, sometimes they do bounce a lot, those surface conditioning pads. And this felt one here, you can see where they spliced it right here. Um, 
it does skip it kind of bumps every time you come across that part so just keep that in mind sometimes it's really annoying but I'll keep trying it and there's some of them that just drives me nuts and I can't stand the the feel of it even from especially those structured abrasives I find once you get into the real fine grits those ones don't run very smooth and it drives me nuts I'd rather use a fine ceramic because it just runs smoother and um, just something to keep in mind but this one even though it does bump I really like the results I get and so far I can't get that result from any other belt so it's funny because you try all these different belts, they, even the sound of them, some of them, I, they just drive me nuts when they're running and then some belts I turn on like, oh yes, I love that sound. So kind of interesting, they're all different, they all work differently, but it's kind of fun to experiment and see what's out there. All right, so let's take a look at some of the specifics within the different types of belts. Now this here is a 36, uh, I believe it's a 36 grit um, ceramic blaze by Norton. Uh, it's a ceramic belt and I wasn't sure what to expect about this belt because it is so coarse. Um, I saw it and I was like, man, that looks like it's designed for soft woods or something because it is so rough, but I've never seen a belt remove material like steel as quick as this. I've probably sh rough shaped about 12 blades with this so far. And you can see, even though it's worn down a lot, there's still, it's still incredibly aggressive. I'm going to take you over and I'll, I'll give you a little video run of, come on camera. I'll show you this thing actually grinding out a piece of steel and I'm blown away by how fast this removes steel. This is just mild steel. So you see that remove the material quite quickly and uh, it didn't heat it up too bad. There's no bluing lines. I can actually touch it right after I grind it. It's warm, but it's not hot, hot. And uh, with a lot of other belts, that thing would be like blue, purple from all the heat. So obviously there's a lot of heavy grain in there. You can see those thick lines. Not a smooth finish at all, but for just really hogging down material, those ceramic blaze belts work really, really well. When you're grinding your bevel on a knife, you need to stop early. Like you don't want to come right to your edge thickness you need to stop and you need to finish up with a much smoother belt like a 220 grit or even an 80 grit because this 36 leaves some pretty heavy lines and the first few knives I did I ended up I would say I kind of ended up going too far with this one and by the time I was done polishing out the lines from this one my blade was thinner than I'd wanted it to be so keep that in mind if you're gonna look for something like this again this is the Norton R36 uh, ceramic blaze belt but for the uh, grinding material way and the rough shaping and the profiling of a knife this thing is so fast and another belt that I've really liked to, to try with slightly different design are these scalloped belts. Um, this is a 2x72 and I also tried some of these 1x72s and you'll notice these don't have straight edges on them. These are designed more for shaping profiles and contours on the slack side of your belt. So even though this is a 1x72, as long as your machine is running and tracking properly, you're going to have no issues with this running straight. And say if you had a handle that had a curve like this. Now if you were using a straight edge belt, when you start running it in here to shape this or you know smooth it out, a lot of times you actually end up just cutting into your material whereas these little scallops are almost like little reliefs and they allow the belt to follow that contour and it's really really cool these belts have saved me a huge amount of time in finishing off my handle scales um, I've seen other guys use these I think I saw these first on Instagram and I thought you know what I'm gonna give these a try I bought these ones from true grit and I gotta give a thumbs up to those guys because their service has been fantastic uh, cling spore I believe they're aluminum oxide. These are the J-Flex belts. And for things like shaping your handle scales and stuff like that, these things are awesome. I bought five of each one of these and I'm definitely gonna be buying more because these are pretty much the way that I shape my handle scales now. All right guys, so there's a quick look at um, the last six months of experimenting that I've done with belts. And my two cents real quickly to wrap it all up again. You know what, nothing wrong with the aluminum oxide belts. They work great. They're available, they're inexpensive, they work well for metal and wood or synthetic handle materials, whatever you're using. Good all around belts. Structured abrasives, I'm not entirely crazy about. I guess with the exception being the really finer grits, like this one's equivalent to a thousand grit. And I really like the finish I can put like on the spine of a knife. Um, I really don't use this on bevels at all because it just gets too hot. But if I just want to put a really nice finish quickly on the spine of a knife 
or a little detail or something like that. These do work fairly well. For my main cutting, like my finishing bevels, and I'd say if I had to pick anything, I love these ceramics. These things work so well. They keep your workpiece cool, your blade, whatever it is you're grinding. Uh, keep it nice and cool, sparks fly off there like crazy, and they work really well. They last about five times longer than the aluminum oxide. Uh, again, experimenting with a few other things. Really, really like the surface conditioning belts. Excellent way to put a finish on your knife. Save a lot of time. And then these scalloped belts. Love these for the handles, work awesome. And lastly, probably my favorite uh, discovery from this little experimenting that I've been doing is this 36 grit blaze. This thing's just redonkulous. Like, I'm pretty sure it removes material quicker than a bench grinder. Um, if I even had a fab shop or a welding shop, I would have belt grinders all over the place set up with these on them because they are so fast. They really last a long time. And I just love seeing sparks fly with these things. So let's kind of to wrap it all up. One thing I've been trying to do lately is use the belt grinder to do as much work as possible. And that's kind of why I've looked into different options as well. You know, if you're the person who really loves to put a satin finish, a hand finish on the bell of your knife, you don't need to waste your time with a surface conditioning pad or some of these other different belts. Um, same thing, if you prefer to hand sand your handles and hand finish the knife, you probably wouldn't want to buy these. So different things for the way different people like to do things, but I'm really trying to get as much stuff done with my 2x72 as I can because I paid good money for that machine. I might as well use it. Um, also on that note, I do have a pile of wheels here. So I've got a couple wheels for a platen and a tracking wheel, a drive wheel, and then I've also picked up a small wheel holder and a whole bunch of small wheels. I've got an assortment here. And this belt grinder is going away soon. I was going to try and modify it and kind of adapt it and make something out of it, but I think I might just scrap it entirely because I think what I have in mind, it's going to take too much work to alter this one. So I'm going to make something similar to this, but I want the capacity to go horizontal. Um, and that would allow me to get rid of this. That's the main reason why I bought these small window, uh, small wheels so that I will be able to put a belt grinder horizontally and run this. That way I've got all my usual belts that I'm accustomed to working with at my disposal and I can match the finish, say, with the spine of the knife to a finger curve on the handle of the knife rather than being limited to doing this with whatever grit I have available to me and then trying to hand finish it to match. So if I get this belt grinder built up, I'll probably do a video on the build um, I hope to start that in the next week or two. I've been so busy with everything else, but another belt grinder is on the way and hopefully we'll get that done. Yeah, I'll probably do a whole video and I'll show you it. Uh, and when I do that one, I will do full detailed dimensions, maybe even put drawings and put them for download somewhere because I get a lot of questions about information on this, my other homemade grinder. And it's really essentially just a piece of junk, but it works. Um, it's ugly, but Anyways, that's what's coming down later on this channel. Also, thanks so much for all your support. I've gotten over a thousand subscribers since I did my last Tool Time Tuesday, so that's in one week. At this rate, two weeks from now, we're going to be giving away your knife and doing that contest, and I just can't believe the uh, support that I've received from you guys. Thank you so much. I sincerely appreciate it. Thanks for watching another edition of Tool Time Tuesday. Y'all take care. Cheers.